This lecture will cover the BMR and BMI topics in the Lab 1 endocrine system. As you can see, we have several objectives that we will cover over the course of this recording. Because this lab concerns hormones, let's remind ourselves that hormones are chemical messengers that regulate the function of other cells. They travel through the bloodstream which allows them to have extensive effects all over the body. Some hormones can work as quickly as a few seconds, while other hormones take hours before the effects are seen. As long as the hormone is bound to the target receptor, the effects of the hormone will be in place. So hormones will be active until they are broken down or deactivated. The effects of hormones are varied. We could stimulate other glands to release hormones, or we could stimulate the exocrine cells to secrete substances. We could activate or inhibit enzymes from doing their job. We could activate or inhibit mitosis and meiosis, or cell division. We could even activate or inhibit gene expression, also known as protein synthesis. Hormones can also have an effect on ion channels. We can open or close ion channels, which affects membrane potential and could increase or decrease the likelihood of action potentials. This particular lab, the BMR and the BMI, were concerned with the thyroid gland and the thyroid hormone specifically. So you'll be happy to know that thyroid hormone does come from your thyroid gland. Sometimes you'll hear thyroid hormone referred to as thyroxine. You may even um, hear it referred to as T3 and T4. They're all the same names for the same hormone, just thyroid hormone. Sometimes we'll abbreviate thyroid hormone TH as well. So just keep those things in mind. Now, thyroid hormone is responsible for helping you maintain what we call your basal metabolic rate, your BMR, okay? Now, your BMR helps you control the use of glucose as an energy source throughout your body. We're going to take that glucose and we're going to do cellular respiration with that glucose in the presence of oxygen. And for every glucose molecule that we metabolize, we get 36 ATP from that. But every time we do that, we release heat as a byproduct. Now, when we say that BMR, your basal metabolic rate, this is the minimum amount of energy required to maintain life. So if you were to stay in bed for an entire day, did not exert yourself at all, you just lay there, okay? You still need energy to stay alive. You still need energy for your brain to function, for your heart to continue to pump, all those other bodily functions. That bare minimum amount of energy that you need to just stay alive, that's what your BMR is. That's what we're working with here. Now we can actually mathematically calculate that. In the top corner up here, you can see that this is kind of what the formula looks like. Okay. Now this will not be given to you on the exam, so you do need to make sure that you can jot this down from memory. You will have access to a calculator, so you don't have to do long division in your head or even on scratch paper, that's a little bit too much, but you do have to know how to set up these problems. You are going to have to know how to punch in the numbers correctly into your calculator. So we're going to have at the end a milliliter of oxygen per hour over a weight in a kilogram, okay? So milliliters of oxygen per kilogram per hour. So we're gonna end up needing to convert things, okay? So we need hours, you may end up be given minutes. So we'll need to work on that conversion. So if I said that we are using seven milliliters of oxygen in one minute, then we know that there are 60 minutes in every hour and that's going to be times the seven milliliters of oxygen that we had in that one minute, which gives us 420 milliliters of oxygen we are consuming in every hour. Okay. Then we're going to need to make sure that our weight is in kilograms. Oftentimes it will be given to you in grams instead, so we'll again need to convert. So for example, if I tell you that a rat weighs 333 grams, then we'll need to move our decimal over three places. 
we'll end up with 0 0.333 kilograms. And this would be the number that we're now working with. Okay, our new number up here, our 420 milliliters of oxygen per hour. That's now our new number that we're working with. So we've got our two numbers, okay? And now we're going to divide, okay? So our 420 milliliters of oxygen per hour, oops, we're gonna divide that by our 0 0.333 kilograms that we just converted, and that will give you a total of 1,261 milliliters of oxygen per hour per kilogram. Don't worry, we're going to do some more practice. Now, as you can see in your lab manual pages, we have a whole setup for a theoretical experiment involving rats, thyroid hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone. We have lots of things going on. So take a look at your pages, follow along with me. Let's make sure you understand the setup. Okay. So we are going to have three rats that we're working with. Lab rat number one is a perfectly normal rat. Um, we have plucked him off the street. Lab rat number two has had his thyroid gland removed. We call this a thyroidectomy. Okay. Lab rat number three has had his pituitary gland removed. Instead, we call this a hypophysectomy. Okay, you might want to make sure you remember those two fancy science terms, thyroidectomy, hypophysectomy. Okay. Now, we're going to take each of those three rats, our normal, our no thyroid rat, our no pituitary rat. Now, we're going to look at what happens to the BMR of those rats if we give them certain medications. Okay. We'll be working with thyroxine or TH, right, thyroid hormone. We'll be working with thyroid stimulating hormone, and we'll be working with PTU. Okay, now PTU, propothiouracil, is a thyroid hormone inhibitor. Okay, and hopefully you remember what an inhibitor does. So for this experiment, for this purpose, the following values are what we are considering below normal, above normal, and or, and normal for our BMR ranges. So anything below 1700 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram per hour is considered below normal. If you are between 17 and 1800 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram per hour, we're considering that a normal BMR range. Anything above 1800 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram per hour, we're considering that above a normal BMR range. Okay, you are going to want to remember these values as well. Okay. You need to be able to remember what's normal so you can quickly determine are we at normal, are we below normal, or are we above normal. Okay. Now, you have a little chart, chart number two. Okay. We would like you to predict what you think will happen if we have the following scenarios. So. We are predicting that if we have our normal rat, if we do not give them any treatment at all, their BMR should be normal. Okay, We have not done anything to this rat. We have not removed any of its organs. We are not giving them any medication. The BMR should be normal. Okay? The rat that has no thyroid gland, okay? if we do not treat them with any medication, and they lack a thyroid gland. Hopefully it makes sense that if we have no thyroid gland, we will not have a lot of thyroid hormone and our BMR will be below normal. Okay. If we lack a pituitary gland and we do not provide drug treatment for this rat, then no pituitary gland means no thyroid stimulating hormone. If your thyroid gland is not being stimulated, we will not be producing thyroid hormone. And again, our BMR is going to be below normal. Okay, so that's what we're doing. We are taking a rat and we are providing them either no treatment, we're providing them with thyroid hormone, yeah. <laughs> we're providing them with thyroid stimulating hormone, or we're providing them with PTU. How will the BMR change? Will it continue to stay normal 
Will it go below normal? Will it go above normal? And then we'll do the same thing with the no thyroid rat. Will it stay below normal? Will it go to normal? Will it even go past normal and go above normal? And then again, same thing with our pituitary lacking rat. Will we stay below normal? Even if we give TH, will we go above normal? Will we just go to normal? So pause your video, take a few minutes and make your predictions. Okay? Don't just skip ahead and fill in the answers. You genuinely need to understand what should happen with each of these rats. If you take out their thyroid, what happens to the BMR if you give them thyroid hormone? so forth and so on. So again, pause your video, make your predictions. When you've made your predictions, restart your video and we'll check your work. Now that you've filled in your work, let's go in, let's double check your answers. Okay. If your answers do not match these answers, please go back, rewatch the latest portion of this, try this experiment again. Try to follow along with this pathway. Really try to understand what happens if something in this chain is missing and how that will affect your BMR. So here we go. Here's our answers. Okay. So our normal rat, if you give them extra thyroid hormone, their BMR will go above normal. If you take our normal rat and provide thyroid stimulating hormone, the thyroid will be stimulated to crank out even more thyroid hormone, which again increases your BMR above normal. We've mentioned that PTU is a thyroid hormone inhibitor, so if we give our normal rat PTU, we will have inhibited your thyroid. Less thyroid hormone means that our BMR is now below normal. Our rat that has no thyroid started below normal with our BMR. If we supplement and give this rat thyroid hormone, then our BMR should now go to normal. Okay. If we provide this rat with thyroid stimulating hormone, um, you're really not going to see any change because this rat has no thyroid to stimulate. Okay. Um, the BMR should stay below normal. Now, the PTU, again, is an inhibitor of the thyroid. Even though you don't have a thyroid to inhibit here, the BMR will still stay below normal um, because you're still not going to have TH to normalize that BMR in the first place. And last but not least, our rat that has no pituitary. We started off with our BMR below normal. We are giving this rat thyroid hormone this should normalize or raise our BMR to normal. Okay. Our rat that has no pituitary that was not cranking out thyroid stimulating hormone. Okay. We are now providing thyroid stimulating hormone. So now this thyroid will be stimulated to crank out its own thyroid hormone. BMR should go back to normal. Since PTU is still an inhibitor, we see that all three of these are all below normal. Okay. Now, I hope you did well. I hope you got every single one of these boxes correct. If that's not the case, please make sure you take a little extra time, go back, re-listen, try this again. Okay. Make sure you understand this pathway. Okay. If anything in this pathway is disrupted, what is that going to affect? The higher up you mess with things, if you mess with your hypothalamus and you don't release TRH, you're not stimulating your pituitary, which means you're not sending out TSH, which means you're not stimulating your thyroid. If you're not stimulating your thyroid, you're not cranking out thyroxine, and your BMR is going to be below normal. So every time you affect something different, the subsequent effects could be a little bit different. Okay, So please make sure you really take some time to understand this pathway.